we bring you the latest economic issues concerning South Korea. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Chamber. In recent days, tension between South Korea and Japan have been escalating due to trade disputes. We'll take a closer look at this issue with Song myung gwan Senior Researcher at the Korea Development Institute. Welcome to The Chamber. South Korea and Japan have maintained an amicable relationship for decades in the economic sector. Last month, the Japanese government has enforced export regulations on three semiconductor materials. And now, in less than a month, Japan has decided to remove South Korea from its white list, a list of 27 countries granted preferential trade status. Asia the United States the United States States. Nijuhatini 맞대응할 수 있는 방안들을 가지고 있습니다. 가해자인 일본이 적반 하장으로 오히려 컨솔 치는 상황을 결코 좌시하지 않겠습니다. The trade disputes between South Korea and Japan are accelerating. So let us now see what kind of effect the trade disputes will have on the Korean economy and the global economy. We also see if there are solutions on this week's third chain. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. You know, Japan first banned the uh, export of core materials used to manufacture semiconductors, and it's been about 40 days since they initiated that ban. Tell me a little bit more of what the atmosphere is like in the semiconductor market. I would say that uh, what matters to Korean semiconductor industry is more about uh, uncertainty rather than uh, real damage. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, since the beginning of July, uh, Japan has restricted the export of three core materials uh, that are used to uh, semiconductor and display industry. And, but so far, uh, Korea economy uh, has been avoiding the damage. Uh, there are two reasons for this. Uh, first, uh, globally, the semiconductor industry is in a recession, mm -hmm. so Korean chip makers has lots of inventories, and uh, so there are some rooms to uh, manage this kind of situation. And second, uh, usually chip makers has uh, two or three months of stocks or materials that are used to uh, their product, so. Uh, it's been 40 days so far, and there's still room for uh, chip makers. Mm. So these two reasons, Korea chip makers could, uh, could avoid the real damage from the uh, Japanese export restrictions. Mm. You mentioned that a lot of these chip makers, these semiconductor industries, as they are facing these economic uncertainties, and especially with the three primary ingredients that they export from Japan, how serious do you think this issue is right now? Well, the proportion of this industry in Korean economy is uh, around 20%, so it's huge. So Very if big. there's some reduction in uh, semiconductor product, then that could be a big impact uh, on Korean economy. And for their, uh, Japan restricted uh, three core elements. Uh, first is fluorinated polyamide. The other one is uh, photoregistry, and the final one is a high purity etching gas. Uh, more than 90% of fluorinated polymer import uh, and photo registry uh, came from Japan and around 45% high purity etching gas uh, comes from Japan. So uh, Korea chip makers and display makers tried everything to 
not to affect its production line, uh, but uh, they have to find alternatives to Japanese import. You mentioned that these major chip makers, Samsung Electronics, yes, SK, SK Hynix, SK Hynix and yeah. other semiconductor industries, mm -hmm. they've been able to meet the demands over the next two or three months by securing the supply that is there, but they need to purchase these core materials ASAP. How serious do you think this is? Oh yeah, without uh, securing the, the imp, these kinds of inputs, then naturally their production lines can hold. So there are few Korean company that produce these kinds of uh, materials, so we expect that the market effect would be minimal in this material case. Uh, but so far, the, the chip makers try a hard time to find uh, alternatives to uh, Japan's import. Yeah, it sounds like a very difficult obstacle and hurdle that they need to overcome, especially now with the recent announcement that Japan had made to remove South Korea. South Korea is the only Asian country on this white list, and so Japan had recently announced that they're going to remove South Korea from this list. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, uh, on August 1st, Japan's cabinet passed a bill to remove Korea from uh, the white, so-called white list. Uh, their intention is clear. Uh, they try to control the key materials, control the export of key materials to South Korea. And these key materials is uh, for the production of semiconductors. Uh, Abe, government seems like what they thought was if they threat to their companies uh, to, to hold the production, then the, maybe the Korean government move as they wish. Uh, but so far, the Korean government's reaction is very tough, and political side uh, is very hard to kind of back down uh, because because it's, it looks like, it's, it seems like uh, it's kind of showing that the weakness of is, uh, uh, your position. So, so definitely some political motivations. Political motivations, okay. yeah, yes, yeah. It seems like for the first time in 15 years, South Korea will be facing some sort of import restrictions on some very important core materials, over 1,100 of them, yeah. right? And so as these trade restrictions come into play, what sort of industries will be most affected by this? Oh, yeah, sure. You can say that first, the uh, ICT uh, industry, you know, the semiconductor use almost all ICT uh, uh, industry, and also machineries and uh, chemicals uh, are vulnerable to the uh, export control of Japan. Uh, it's, it, it may be the first time that we have, we have a chance to look at how vulnerable Korea economy is to uh, Japan's uh, actually export. The history of the development of Korea economy, uh, we first, uh, the industrialization of Korea economy came from the plant and machineries from Japan. So uh, from the initiative, from, from the first point, Korea economy, uh, was dependent on, on Japan. And now, the reality, how vulnerable we are, the Korean economy, uh, this time we can see these kinds of vulnerability here. And it's very important to get over this kind of vulnerability of Korean economy. And uh, one good thing for this episode, the export control of Japan, is that uh, it could, uh, provide kinds of new thought and new motive for Korean economy to kind of restructure its uh, economic uh, functioning. Mm. It seems like the, regardless of how big or small this market is, Korea's major industry is set to face a lot of challenges and it kind of proves and shows just how much these Korean industries are dependent on Japan. We will now connect via Skype with foreign experts and hear their opinions on this issue. What we're really looking at here is how this impacts supply chains. And so if we look back at the initial decision to restrict three key chemicals by Japan at the beginning of July, we haven't seen any licenses issued for these chemicals. And these industries tend to focus on just-in-time delivery. So what that means is, is that 
if you have a situation to where there's either further delays or you have a situation to where the chemicals are restricted, that then starts rippling through the supply check supply sectors in the electronics industry, potentially in things like petrochemicals, the auto industry. So in essence, any restrictions on trade with South Korea start rippling out to other countries in the region as well. We're going to take a short look at a video clip that highlights the trade relations between South Korea and Japan after the normalization of diplomatic relations between the two nations since 1965. The South Korean government is in panic mode trying to come up with countermeasures against the Japanese government, which has imposed export restrictions and has announced that it will remove South Korea from its white list of trusted trading partners. Now then, watch what the trade relations between South Korea and Japan like until now. Korean companies are in a crucial state. As due to Japan's export regulations, they need to undergo intense radical reform in high-tech industries. And at the same time, it is definitely a tough blow for Japanese companies which rely on exports to Korea. A solution is needed as soon as possible to prevent further damages in both countries. You know, I'm quite surprised that South Korea has been on the short end of the stick with trade relations with Japan for over five decades now. And I'm very sure that a lot of Japanese companies will be highly impacted by these trade restrictions as well, especially now where the export numbers of Japan have been setting negative records. I know South Korea had recently helped Japan achieve a surplus in terms of their imports. How do you think Japanese companies are reacting to all of this? Oh, well, it's, it's quite natural to think that the worst victim for this trade tension between two countries would be the Japanese companies uh, that uh, ask for these kinds of regulated uh, materials to South Korea. You know, there are two kinds of scenarios we can imagine. First is that, uh, you know, the Abe government, they try to avoid uh, uh, kinds of big impact on the world economy. Mm. So they try to minimize the impact of this. So they just use these kinds of uh, export control as just threat. And they uh, allow uh, Japanese company to export Korea like this month. Then uh, there's no harm to Korea. And uh, apparently there's no harm to uh, Japanese uh, company that asks for these materials. And second case, second scenario we can imagine is that the, the actual export restriction will be done. And so in that case, Korean side, Korean chip makers will suffer, but also the uh, Japanese export companies will suffer too. In these two scenarios, we can think of the real harm to Japanese exporter in the second case. But even in the first case, uh, let's think about this. The Korean, as the Korean uh, chip maker's point of view, uh, they would worry about the future. Uh, they, they, they don't know when the Japanese government try to impose or try to uh, uh, kind of restrict the export, their co-import co materials to uh, Korea. So it's natural for uh, Korea chip makers to think about the switching uh, the uh, co-material suppliers. So in that case, the Japanese company would lose. So in, in both scenarios, Japan's company definitely is the uh, worst victim in this uh, uh, trade tensions between two countries. I, I, uh, so far, uh, this trade tension is not limited to economic aspect, but the more the damage to Japanese company become clear, the greater the opposition from Japanese side. Uh, that's my guess. Mm. Now, these trade disputes between South Korea and Japan not only influences these two countries, but also puts a setback on the global supply chain as well. And many experts are concerned on how this will affect 
the global economy as well. What are your views on this? Yeah, uh, some people argue that uh, the if uh, this the worst scenarios happens in the real world, then uh, the the damage, the negative impact on this trade tension between. Uh, South Korea and Japan would be worse than the trade tension between China and U.S. What do you think that worst case scenario is? Oh yeah, uh, if uh, uh, Abe government, they, they uh, stop, they make uh, Japanese export to stop exporting to South Korea. So there's a, uh, there will be a, uh, production disruptions in uh, South Korea uh, chip makers. And you know the South Korea. South Korea is a home to uh, Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix, uh, that are big producers, the dominant players in uh, memory chip industry. And so they they produce around two third of world uh, memory chips. So if their production lines hold, then the price of memory chips significantly increase because there's no alternative uh, supplier for these memory chips. So significantly higher price of memory chips, the effect of this uh, higher price uh, is, uh, is moving around the, the supply chain of uh, ICT sector. Final goods use the memory chip, and if there's a higher price for memory chips actually uh, happens, then the, fine, the price of final goods would increase definitely the uh, global supply chain of ICT industry. That's very interesting because you mentioned the global impact and the ripple effect of all of this. Specifically, the American IT industry is keeping a close eye on what's going on between the two nations as much of the materials for semiconductors and displays mm -hmm are produced and supplied by South Korea and Japan. Can you elaborate more on this? Six uh, tech association in America, they send a letter to uh, South Korea and Japan. They emphasize the, the role of two countries. Two countries are, are big players in ICT industry, and ICT industry is the worldwide IC industry is closely related to through the global uh, value chains. Um, and they warn Japan that uh, your action actually work, works against your interest. Mm -hmm. So this kind of action shows the, the U.S. industry's concern about this trade tension between two countries. Situation. Significant market share. Yeah. Um, in terms of the foreign media, financial institutions, and other experts, as they you know, think about this trade dispute between South Korea and Japan, what do they predict that some of the effects will be on the global economy? The ICT sector is the most, most sophisticated sector that closely related to global supply chains in the world. And so this issue, this trade issue between uh, South Korea and Japan is not only the two countries issue is, is kind of a global issue because as you mentioned, the, the US uh, uh, consumers for memory chips concern very much about this, like Apple and Amazon is, is a big consumer okay. of uh, Samsung Electronics memory chips. Right. And, and also Vietnam case and China, we export many uh, huge amount of memory chips to China. And also, you know, the uh, European country is not uh, is not immune to these kinds of crises. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, most some people worry that the, the negative impact of trade, this trade tension on the global economy is much uh, much bigger than the uh, the impact of uh, trade tensions between uh, U.S. and China. When we think about how this might impact China or the United States, on the economic side, in the case of China, what this has done is it's reinforced the view in China after the Huawei decision that it needs to take and continue to invest in its Made in China 2025 plan to become a key supplier of semiconductors itself. 
So in essence, what we're doing is taking and providing further incentives for China to develop an industry that will be a competitor to both industries in, China, in the United States and in South Korea. For the United States, in addition, you're also looking at security concerns based on the development of, or the deployment, excuse me, of 5G wireless networks. Um, Samsung is the fourth largest 5G equipment maker, and so anything that makes it more difficult for Samsung to be able to take and potentially develop 5G networks increases the security issue for the United States by making it more difficult to have secure networks elsewhere in the world. This will not only affect but also disrupt supply chains and add cost to the manufacturing process. And when it adds cost to the manufacturing process, uh, margins of profit are down for companies and prices are higher for consumers. Um, we do have to remember that um, informally stripping uh, Korea of the white list doesn't necessarily mean that Japan, Japanese companies can no longer send those chemicals to Korea. It just means they will need approval to do so. Now, obviously, this is a lever that Japan is using. They may not approve those shipments, um, but they might do so um, should an agreement um, be reached. So again, you know, even though South Korea has lost white country status, um, they're really now simply on the same footing as, as China, as Taiwan, as Singapore. And Japan does export to those countries in, in large numbers. It sounds like many experts are expecting that this trade dispute, if it's prolonged, that it will continue to place an overcast, gloomy outlook on the total global economy. However, there's some who, on the flip side, argue that there will be some positive beneficiaries to this trade dispute, namely China, as you mentioned. Uh, some even say that the winner of the South Korea-Japan trade dispute is China. What do you think? Well, uh, definitely China uh, is trying to foster their uh, semiconductor industry. But, you know, it takes time to foster this kind of industry because of technology gap. You know, it's not easy to, easy to follow the, it's, it's not easy and it's not uh, easy to overcome these kinds of techno technology gaps between uh, uh, South Korea and China. Uh, it's like uh, Korea cannot produce these three core materials mm. immediately. Right. Yeah? I don't think China get over this this uh, technology gap and uh, try to utilize this situation. Okay. Sounds like there's a lot of uncertainty in both the short term and the long term as well. Mr. Song, could you share and summarize maybe your final thoughts about this trade dispute between South Korea and Japan? Yeah, uh, we all know that this is lose-lose situation, but we also know that it's very hard to back down uh, both governments. For the Korean government, what, what would I like to say is that uh, Korean government should play by WTO rules. I, I suggest that please don't play like Japan do. Mm. Okay? Japan does. So they must, the Korean government must play by the rules. And to the uh, Japanese government, uh, I would like to say that uh, Japanese government Please go back to the, uh, the position that your previous government has, like in 19, especially in 1990s, uh, you know, the Kono statement mm -hmm. and Ryama statement was announced and they acknowledged the, the uh, comfort one, the, they acknowledged their, uh, the imperial army's role in recruiting compulsory women, and also uh, in the case of Brahma statement, they apologize the suffering and all the damage they've done to the Asian nations. And I, so if Japan go back to that position in 1999, in 1990s, then uh, I think we can, we could find the very, uh, uh, constructive solutions to get over this situation and to make uh, the relations between two countries more concrete. Very important factor in that. I know that's very hard to predict how these trade disputes will pan out between South Korea and Japan and I know it's a very sensitive subject as well and so we can only be patient and hopeful that things will be closed off in an amicable manner. 
Mr. Song, thank you so much for joining us today here at the studio. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure sitting down with Hong Young Hwan, senior researcher at the Korea Development Institute. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your thoughts and your expertise with us today in the studio. It was Thanks a pleasure. for having me today. Thank you.